guys? So today is the day I'm going to be trying to pull my motor out today. Um, so a little bit of background information. My car has been leaking for quite some time now. Um, last May I took the motor out to do the valve covers and the rear main seal and a couple other things. Um, and since then it has started leaking from pretty much everywhere again um, that I didn't touch. So this time since I have tons of time in quarantine I am going to pull the motor out and spend my time wisely uh, doing all of my seals and crush washers and pretty much everything that's leaking on my car. Um, so yeah, I just thought it'd be cool if I could take you guys with me, kind of walk you through how to pull, or how I pull, um, a 255, and we'll see how this goes. First off, huge thank you to my buddy Nathan, who let me use his little tripod here, um, so I can kind of sit my phone up and you guys can kind of watch what I'm doing. Okay, so... As you guys can see, <laughs> it kind of leaks a lot. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's literally oil dripping from everywhere. So the oil coolers dripping, oil pans dripping. Um, I'm pretty sure my turbo uh, feed line and drain line out at the back are leaking because everything back there is soaked. Yeah, pretty, pretty much everything is leaking right now. So. I mean, it's leaking everywhere, but the worst of it is right here. I'm pretty sure one of my cam seals is leaking in there because um, it drips down onto this header and then uh, kind of smokes while I'm driving. Kind of looks like my car's about to catch fire, so we're going to deal with that. Okay, so the car's jacked up, um, and we're pretty much good to go. Uh, first thing to do is start draining your coolant and your oil, and we'll do that now. So right now I've got kind of a big tub underneath that one side. Um, I'm pretty sure you could just pull the lower rad hose on this side, but it's going to come out way faster than I can really control with what I have. Um, and I'll probably get sprayed in the face, so I'm just going to do the little plug and see what happens. Okay, so that drain plug hates me, so we're going to try on this side. Okay, so we got the lower rad hose off. I don't know if you can see. We are draining. Yay. So while that's draining, you can kind of get started on some other stuff. Um, so we're going to do the intake and probably the intercooler first. So to take out the intake, you just have one hose clamp. The flathead. And you gotta take off the mass sensor, which is kind of near the top. Looks head. Mine's a little stripped, so it doesn't really like to come out. Sometimes the other screwdriver helps. Last thing for the intake, I forgot to say it, um, so your mask sensor comes out, you can just kind of tuck it out of the way. Um, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right underneath the intake, well at least for the cob ones. Um, and it just kind of holds it to a bracket so it doesn't move around. So you're going to take that out. After that, you should be able to just wiggle it right out. Normally it comes off pretty easy. So I normally put everything just in a little bucket so you can keep track of it. Okay, so next we can probably do the battery because that's pretty easy. Okay, so the easy stuff is done. Um, batteries out, intakes out, coolant straining. Um, next is oil eventually when that stops leaking. Um, and now I'm going to do the intercooler. So the intercooler is just a couple bolts. There's one bolt on this side, and then there's another bolt on this side, and then some hose clamps. And you pretty much just pull it off after that.
These are a 10. So the next folds you're going to want to take out are at the bottom of the intercooler here. Right back in there. So as I pull, don't lose that, um, as I pull lines off and stuff, I kind of like to, I like to label almost, just in case I can't figure out, you know, what goes to what, like if you're not sure. Um, for the most part, I think I know how to put this thing back together because I've done it once before, but you never know, you might forget something or miss a step or not know where something goes, so I just kind of like, I throw some tape on it. And I just write letters, so I'll go like A and then A here so that you know when you button it back up, A goes to A, B goes to B, and so Okay, so getting the inner cooler off is going to be interesting because I'm five foot three, so we're going to use a stool. Oh, I forgot a hose. Okay, it should come out for real now. Okay, so now that the rod is pretty much drained, I haven't heard anything dripping in like 20 minutes now, um, we're going to pull that out and pull the rod out in the fans um, to kind of get access in there and probably do a while I'm at it. So you're going to want to take the rod mount bolts off. So just kind of hold it in place. And then you can start taking your hoses off because all your coolant's already drained. So you got your upper rad hose. That doesn't like me. It never likes me. We'll do that one in a second. Um, and then you have the rad hose over here. The little guy. That guy can come off. With a flat head and a little bit of wiggling, you can normally pop that guy off. Okay, so this is pretty much ready to come out now, I think. As far as I can remember, I've only done this once. So the last thing you're going to want to do is there is a little white clip. I don't know if you can see it down there. Um, you're going to want to take that out, and that should be the last thing you need to do before you can take the rod and fan out. Okay, so totally lied. There is two clips, one on either side of the fan. Um, the one got caught when I was trying to take it out, so there is two. Then I had to lay on the ground, and there's coolant in my hair. This isn't going very well, but things are coming out, and that's what matters. So we're going to keep going. Okay, so for real this time, this is like the third try. It's going to come out this time. Hey, look at that. It's coming out. Okay. Okay, so since the coolant is done draining and I've gotten a couple things off, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drain the oil now. I did not bring a towel with me under here. This is great. Okay, well, here I come. Oh, Lord. Okay, we're good. Okay, so now I'm going to take off the AC and the power steering and the alternator. Um, I've always just kind of taken them off and flopped them to the side. I know there's other ways of doing it, but I don't know. I feel like that's the easiest for me. I think you need to loosen this guy first. The one in the middle, I'll show you in a second, just kind of frees up the movement of the bolt that kind of tightens up the belt. 
So there's a little, see that little bolt in there? Right there. Um, you're going to want to do un undo that first, and then that one, and then I think there's one over here too, and it should give you enough slack that you can take the belt off at least. There should be a little bracket at the back that should come off. And then you can slide the bolt forward and you'll have to unthread it again. It kind of, I think it goes through twice. So now your alternator will drop. You can pop gently, making sure not to tear it or damage it. Pop your belt off. There's one. Or mark that one. Okay, so now that the alternator is kind of dropped, um, you're going to want to take off this top nut here, um, this kind of connection over here. Next, I'm going to take off um, that tensioner down there, or at least loosen it so that I can grab this belt off. Okay, so I believe I just undo this. It'll let the tensioner move. Give it some slack at the bottom. So it can kind of wiggle. And then I might have enough slack now, yeah. Should come off. Come on. That's your AC belt. Okay, so all I did for that was I loosened the bolt on this, which kind of allows it to move up and down, the tensioner down there. Um, and then loosened this, and that kind of lets it move up and down, and it was enough to give enough slack on that. Okay, so there's probably tons of different ways that you can get uh, the engine out. Um, I like to take the power steering off, um, same with the AC. So to do that, you need to take the alternator off and all that good stuff. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take those off now, now that I have access to the bolts. They tend to be a little bit tricky sometimes. They're in some really stupid spots, but we're gonna try our best. These ones hate me. I love working on cars. Things are always so easy until they're not. So, trying to get this bolt out of the AC compressor. Can't get it out because my AOS is in the way. Well, I need to take off the AOS then. Well, I can get at two of the bolts down here, but I can't get at the other bolt because the secondary air pump is in the way. And I can't get the secondary air pump out because the fuse box is in the way. Like, <sighs> Okay, so to be able to pull this bolt I needed to pull the AOS, which meant that I had to pull the bolts down in there, which I couldn't get at because I had to take the secondary air pump out. So yeah, okay, we're back on track now. Okay, so the AC is out and flopped over. There was one, two, three, four bolts holding it in. Um, these, this back one is probably the hardest one to get to. Um, it's a combination of patience and different types of extensions and lengths of sockets and it really sucks. Um, these ones aren't too bad to get out. Um, so I'm going to move on to the uh, power steering next. Okay, so for the power steering pump you're going to have three bolts. One's on this side kind of tucked underneath. One's on this side right there. And the other one is tucked back in this gap here. You're not going to be able to see it. I don't think there's enough light, but oh, you can kind of see where it was. Back there. Um, then that can come off and flop over. And then there's just one little connector on top there that you're going to want to undo. Okay, so the power steering is off. And you can actually see back in there why I need to pull this engine out and fix everything. Over here, you're going to have this brake clip and your O2 sensor. Um, that comes off. This comes off. 
This is just a ground. This needs to come off. I'm not sure if everyone will have that, but I have it. Um, and then this connector. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it on this side that needs to come off. There's not much else. Um, if you have a boost gauge, um, like a mechanical boost gauge, I had one. It just comes off right here. Um, I want to take that off. Pretty much anything that is attached from the engine to the car needs to come off. So if you find any wires or nice little hoses, they need to come off. Oh, a uh, few lines need to come off. I didn't do that yet. Um, this needs to come off. These two lines down here need to come off. There's one, and then there's one beneath it. I don't know if you can really see. Um, and then there's two clips down there. That red one and the gray one, those come off. And then I think that's pretty much it, besides the bell housing bolts at the back and the downpipe bolts. I'm pretty sure that's it. So we're going to go ahead and take those off now. I'm way too short for this. So those two are out now. So pretty much everything is all disconnected. Pretty much got everything, I think. Only thing that needs to come off now is the fuel lines and then the bell housing bolts and the downpipe bolts, and I think that's it. Okay, I think I'm done for today. Um, I got pretty much everything done that I wanted to do and a little more, actually. Um, so, yeah, um, everything's pulled except the downpipe bolts and uh, the bell housing bolts. But, I don't know, that's, that's a tomorrow problem. So, for now, I think I'm finished.